Hey, what is up? We are finally back. The combo, Norm and Mike for Sunday, December 18th, 2022. Two streaks and another one has begun. Mike, the Leafs have lost two in a row. The sky yeah. is falling. Good morning. Good morning, Norm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody's really panicking. I mean, they 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 lost a one-goal game with an empty netter in New York. I mean, that snapped Mitch Marner's 23-game point streak, their 15-game consecutive point streak. Uh, they've been among the hottest teams in the NHL. The, the game last night against Washington, um, I tweeted someone or uh, t uh, uh, texted someone and said, um, I expected Bent Gustafson to score a hat trick before Eric Gustafson and Bent Gustafson hasn't played in the league in 30 friggin' years. So, you know, Lang skates. Yes. Yes. I think my brother had a pair of Lang skates, the plastic outside. Like you took a slap shot off, uh, they, you know, they, they would shatter like, like glass, but it, th that's the thing. It's like, I mean, you know, Eric Gustafson roofs one. Uh, I mean, they, they were just, I mean, I didn't think it was a particularly strong night for Ilya Samsonov, but I don't think he was really at fault. Um, yeah, yes, we know the World Cup is at ten o'clock. So, and uh, you can keep us up to, up to date on the score. Exactly. Uh, go Argentina. I know. Um, but I, I'll just say this: like, you know, I think the team has played well. Right. Um, they didn't play particularly well last night. They got a couple goals out of the core group, but defensively they weren't up to the level that they have been for most of the time that Morgan Riley has been out and TJ Brody has been out right. uh, a lot, a lot of sort of seeing eye goals last night. Now, you know, they come back on Tuesday and they play Tampa. That's, yeah, gonna be that, tough. that's a team that they have to beat. That's a team that, you know, they essentially played a good 40 minutes against gave up a lead got a point in Tampa, but you know, that's, th this is a team you should be working yourself up into a lather to play. Mike, the bolts are 29 and one. They're right there with the Leafs. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And th th this is going to be a battle mm -hmm. from now until yep. the end of the season. And then, you know, I, I pointed this out um, uh, to some, a friend of mine. Um, if you look the last week or so, New Jersey is calm, is cooled down. They've of lost. Course, of course, Boston. They they went on the they went on a uh, West Coast swing or a Western trip. They lost to Arizona. Right. Um. They came oh. home. They lost to L.A. in a shootout. Yeah. So you know, all of a sudden they're mortal, and the Leafs now have lost two games in a row in regulation. So the uh, the mortality is showing up, but. I, I still think that the, you know, right now they're they're exceeding expectations, and for the fact that they're not, uh, they don't have their best defenseman, and they probably won't have him for another two to three weeks at least. Right. They're they, you know they they are way ahead of the curve right now. It's interesting. Uh, this is the Leafs combo. Norm along with Mike. Thanks so much, guys, for being here. Please like this content. Subscribe to the channel. We do appreciate your support. And we continue to do content once a week. We will uh, persist throughout the season leading up to what we hope will be the ultimate playoff run, finally, from the Maple Brothers. You know, Mike, it's interesting. They they win, you know, they get points in 15 straight games. Um, you know, M Mitch Marner's on a run, Nylander scoring goals. But when, when you look at them statistically based um against based on, uh, on stats versus other teams mm -hmm. so goals against they're amongst the best i think top top five uh, so the goaltending is 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 has been at more than adequate but the leafs in terms of overall goals not even like the mid mid pack mid pack and you're talking about four of the most dynamic uh, offensive players in their prime right now so uh you you add to that that um the the power play and the penalty kill neither are top 10 right so you know, it's they, they've been doing what they've been doing by getting a group effort and playing hockey that has been sufficient, but not necessarily outstanding. Forget that stupid game against Anaheim, seven nothing. And and actually, the good thing about that game is that a lot of the the tertiary, secondary, the support guys were picking up goals and points in that game as they should. Mm -hmm. But it's not like the Leafs have been 
incredibly outstanding and uh, with with no with no fear. When you look at their stats, they're they're nothing to write home about right now. So there, there's a balancing act. And you wonder if the chickens are going to come home to roost and things are going to settle down, or hey, you know what? You don't have to blow everybody away on each and every night. Just get the job done, and it seems like that's what the Leafs have been able to do to this point. But that game against Anaheim was the exception to the rule. I mean, really, it's been mostly that top four group, that that core four group, along with Bunting, right. uh, scoring most of the points. Right. Uh, the power play, uh, you know, Sandine is getting points on the blue line. But in general, other than Connor Timmons with three assists against Anaheim, you know, the the, the defense will throw in a point here or there. But yep. it, it, you know, the driving force of the offense is the power play and that core four group. Uh, again, that game against Anaheim, you know, Kerfoot scores, uh, uh, Engvall scores, Joey Anderson scores, mm -hmm. you know, so, I mean, you got, but in general, the, the second line, I mean, the second line unit right now, I, I, I think, um, Sheldon Keefe is fearful of breaking up that unit because they've been a so effective comp with Kerfoot and Engvall. They've been really good defensively and they've, you know, they've cycled the puck. Well, they get offensive chances and they scored those two goals against Anaheim. Um, he doesn't want to mess with that. You're not going to get a ton of offense out of that line, but you know, you're going to get some, and you're going to get a lot of war work. The third, the fourth line with Aston Reese and Pontus Holmberg, who I think has been a really a, a good surprise uh, for this team. Uh, has been effective. Joey Anderson probably goes down to the minors uh, when, you know, uh, although he hasn't played badly. But, like, to me, the big hole right now, and, gee, where have you seen me have a problem with this guy before? Dennis Mulgan, 12 games, no points. And most of those 12 games he's played. Oh, a little dipsy do last night and he hit the post. Yeah, I don't care. That's an expected got... goal, Mike. 12, 12, ga 12 games, no points. So, um, and most of those games have been played with Tavares and Marner. Well, it's hard, Mike, again, getting on a Dennis Mulgan, what, what is he, 10th, 15th on the depth chart? So, But he's I mean, playing so second line. He's right, playing but, second okay. line left wing. Right. Okay. <laughs> he's out of place. Um, acquired by Kyle Dubas. Um, Kyle Dubas isn't going to make the right decisions all the time, but he's there. And, and I don't know if they're, tr they think that, you know, his dynamic based on speed and, and, and uh, some skill uh, will, will work and he, um, that the other two will be able to get him going. He, for me, he's the kind of guy I would not want because I want more size and I want more grit and I'm not putting it on Mulgan, but every fucking game, the Leafs get out hit, they out shoot, but they get out hit. This is not going to last. I'm telling you right now, once you get to game 82 and into the playoffs, this is not, this cannot be sustained. And Morgan, well, he, tip, he typifies the kind of like the, um, you know, internal issue here with some of these cats that that they think are just these dynamos that are going to find their way and and, uh, and be able to execute. I don't fucking think so. I, I, I but, never thought, I never thought that they would miss Kali Yarncroke as much as. as Bears and scored goals, man. No, no, no. Benny, be skinny. Mm. I never thought I never thought that they would they would miss Kali Yarncroke as much as they did because yeah. uh, af after they decided to move Kerfoot off that second line, they, they put Yarncroke in there and he scored a couple goals and he's a good responsible defensive player. So it worked and then he got hurt. Right. Now, I haven't heard an update on on him. And Pontus Holmberg is not a left winger, so that that's not that's not something that's not something they're going to do. Um, you know, and Nick Robertson is out for two months. Yeah. So they're waiting. They're waiting for Yarn Croak to come back because right. Morgan is a fourth liner at best. He's a de he's decent defensively. You right. know, for his si for his size, he fights well along the wall, but he can't convert. Right. And 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 Chris in this in the chat is saying bring up Alex. Alex Steves is a center, so you don't you, you don't want to bring up these guys and have them playing out of a position, and then you really won't get a, a good feel about uh, what they. Uh, what they can do now the only guy I, I looked at the Marlies roster and the only guy who I think could be called up and I don't he's not a top six guy either but he's a physical guy maybe he could play is is uh, Adam Gaudet Adam Gaudet I think has like 12 or 13 goals with the Marlies so maybe that 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 they they would give him a look but they seem tied to 
Mulgan in terms of being part of the roster. It's, uh, and I just, I, I don't see it. He's not, he, he's not a, he's not a penalty killer. He's not effective, really effective offensively. He's decent defensively. He doesn't provide size. Um, he's just sort of there. And, uh, and, you know, obviously with me, I can't get over the, uh, the, the Brian, the Mason Marchment for, for Morgan trade a few years ago, because Marchment is having success with Dallas wow. and he's a big body presence and Morgan is not, but you know, that, 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 I guess that that's out the window. So I have to, I guess I have to let that go. Listen, the robbers get robbed at times too. Bird watching life. Wayne Simmons can, uh, doesn't get any points, but he gives you something else. That, I mean, Wayne Simmons, maybe three or four years ago, with a little more vim and vigor to his game, absolutely for sure. And you know me, Mike, I, I, I would, I would um, supplant these fucking miniature players and these guys that everybody thinks are um, uh, statist statistical wizards and wonders if played in the proper system uh, against the ice capades and and. And add more grit and fire and 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 punch. That's uh, you know again. Call me an uncle dragger. I'd prefer they did that because they've got enough scoring. They're at the point right now where they have to just take that that next step and and change the complexion of the team a little bit, especially on the back end. I mean, I do like the the the, the fight and the and the um the compete from from a lot of these guys. But I'm telling you right now, they're going to get stomped out at points uh, by teams who do believe in more physicality. You put this team against that team. This team, our team, will lose nine times out of ten, and you don't get that many opportunities. Speaking of robbery, uh, and again, you know the, the Mason Marchman for Dennis uh, Mason, Mason Marchman for Dennis Mulgan trade. I mean, we'll we won't be able to live that down, especially Kyle Dubas, who's at the center of that. Um, how about Connor Timmons, like uh, Arizona, as if that stupid franchise doesn't have enough troubles. Uh, the guy's uh, eighteen points, eighteen minutes a night. Mm -hmm. uh, big boy, six foot two, over two hundred pounds. He's got six assists. Now, I'm not really expecting too much of a, an offensive production from this guy. But well, we'll take it, and I'll take the ice time. I just want a confident body back there who's big and who isn't going to get pushed around. Well, okay. I mean, based on his um, his junior statistics, he's, he is an offensive player. Based on, you know, what right. what the the, um, uh, the the projections were of him before he started having – significant injuries, concussion problems with Colorado. Um, then, He's not here now to do that, Mike. Not really. No, no, I, I, I know. But I'm, what I'm saying is what he's doing now is not unexpected. If, But his problem was, again, like Matt Murray, avail, uh, uh, not ability, but availability. And right. he has come in, and I think the smart thing for the Leafs to have done after trading uh, for him uh, – trading Curtis Douglas for him was not to rush him into the lineup. They, they put Hollowell in there. They uh, gave him a, a chance to sort of get acclimated and he's played. And let's just say this, when you're playing with TJ Brody, you have a, uh, a, a, a safety net. Um, he, cause he, and, and he has played well. Now they've inserted him into more offensive situations in games that they've trailed uh, like against the Rangers and against the Capitals, he stepped up and played top four minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, against the Rangers, it was more because Liljegren got hurt, and he is he has played well. Um, you know, he's a right hand shot. He's a big kid. He's not a overly physical kid. He's got uh, you know he's a very good passer. He's got a big shot. Um, this was an acquisition. It, it was a it was a risk worth taking because they needed bodies on defense, uh, and he so far has paid big dividends. Now. You know, we have to see whether this pans out over the preceding weeks and months. What I what I say is this: um, Morgan Riley more than likely comes back first second week of June, uh, January. Yeah. Um, Brody is back. G, uh, Jordy Ben is uh, back, but they didn't feel comfortable putting him in the lineup if Lloyd couldn't have played yesterday. So they called up Mac Hallwell on emergency recall, mm -hmm. but what they have now eight defensemen. Uh, you know, I'm not saying no, they don't go out and they don't trade for a defenseman at the deadline. If you can improve the blue line. Yeah. But Mike, just sorry to interrupt you, but we, last, last week, seven days ago, at that point, And again, we're living in the moment with this show in 22, 23, but in that moment, we felt pretty content about this defensive core. Yeah. And 
Connor Timmons was just beginning to integrate himself into the mix. I mean, at least at this point with Morgan Riley expected back. Do you still feel that way? Yes. Yeah, I do. I do. Because they're not only going to, I mean, they're going to improve when Riley gets back. And now you have Ben and Timmons. Now, the, 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 honestly, the thing that the thing that made the problem is getting is getting everybody enough ice time. I mean, right. for Timmons to improve and uh, he has to play. Yeah. So who so who sits? I mean, you could sit Giordano and give him a couple games off, you know, because he's wow. not so many big minutes. You could sit Justin Hall because Justin Hall is not that good of a defenseman. Um, but he's played well over the last few weeks. But it's a nice problem to have, and you always have injuries. I mean, Lilligren, uh, almost it looked like he may have broken a finger, um, but the X-rays were negative, and he played. He played last night, so it wasn't as serious as it looked when uh, on on Thursday in New York. Um, so you're always going to lose defensemen, but you need eight or nine defensemen to get through a long playoff run. So it, the possibility is still there that they go out and acquire a Luke Shen or a depth defenseman at the deadline. The thing is though, is like everybody and in, including me, carousel, right? Everybody, including me was saying at the beginning of the season, they need to go and especially after, after Jake Muzzin went out that they needed to go out and get a top four defenseman and a top four defenseman costs a first round pick and right. prospects. But Probably, things, change, Mike, things change, things evolve based on how your team is performing. Right. Exactly. And, and now I look at the, I look at the situation and I say, I think the greater need is a left winger for the Tavares Marner line. Now, if Yarncroke plays well coming back, then you know, then that's not a crying need. But they are going to take a chance at getting somebody to improve the team because they'll probably have the cap space to play with with Jake Muzzin uh, being on LTIR, and um, you know that that means you know could they upgrade at center? It's a forward. It's a for, it's a for, it's a forward as of right now in this moment. That's the focal point. A adding adding a forward or two. Who knows? Yeah, and well, I mean, I think that the I think that the crying need is size and sandpaper up front. Right. Now, if you can get that along with somebody who can play in your top six, like a Tyler Bertuzzi from ah. Detroit or Timo Meyer from San Jose, or there are a few <laughs> other. Yeah, please. He's a I mean, okay, he's big and doesn't play big. He's yeah, exactly. that's the issue. Yeah. He can't he he can't skate anymore. I thought about that too. Uh, double M uh, M and M. I thought that too. So he well, can't skate. He I'm... can't skate anymore, and he can't play defense. So right. gee, well, I mean the the thing the things that changed from him leaving a few years ago are even worse now. I mean I I mean the, my friends uh, from off the post. I'm uh, being Phil Kessel's valet. <laughs> no, that was well. No, that well. Yeah, no, that was. Uh, if you remember, Ricard Valine was Jonas Gustafson's valet. I don't know if they they were if they replaced him because he did he did he did his valet job so well back then. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay, hold on a sec. Uh, Mur Murray Lindsay, I see the Leafs winning a round this year. Uh, I think they can beat Tampa, Boston in the first round. Goaltending is better. Uh, D will be deeper. Plus, they are facing adversity. Uh, you're you're not wrong there, Mister Lindsay. You're you're not wrong, um, and I'm I'm glad you're optimistic about it. We're all internally optimistic about it, uh, even if uh, you know what we express is a little bit different or devi deviates from the internal optimism. Why why be a fan if you don't deep down hope your team is uh, going to f finally get it done? And again, Mike, I'm on the same page. Why why would you not want to uh, bring on? Uh, you know, it's not even about tenure or experience, but I mean, that helps, but somebody who, who is capable and who is ready to, to endure a, a long run and be able to put the pedal to the metal physically, as well as, uh, you know, be responsible, um, and, uh, and help in all aspects of the game, because I'm telling you, we all know this, it's a freaking war of attrition, especially when you get the, the season's one thing, the playoffs are the next, but every damn champion that's ever been un, uh, crowned and a championship that was earned by these teams has had, uh, different has had layers of of talent you know from from the skill guys to the tough guys to the you know the the stay at home to the defensive to the great goaltending the the leafs from from top to bottom still aren't the complete package now i've seen a few things in the chat here and guys we're going to keep this short because i've got a shitload to do mike's got, you know mike's marathon podcasting has to end at some 
time. Yeah, um, I, had to, I had to dig myself out, out of another foot of snow. Yeah, that's what I love about Buffalo. There's snow here. It's bullshit little sprinkling. It's Christmas for fuck's sakes. We need we need uh, Christmas and, and snow. But uh, I'm seeing in, in the chat, you know, there's still a little bit of discontent over what we're getting from, uh, you know, the reigning MVP. I mean, 37, 37 points. He is uh, 16, 16 goals. Goal. Can this guy just not play in peace or what? Yeah, please. It's like, um, you know, people are going to say, well, he had a bad year and he scored 40. I mean, no, like, I'm sorry. It's like he's not going to score 60 goals every year. Right. Um, he, You know, I, he it's started off. It's a Guerrero kind of season. He started off slow and now – He's scoring at a pretty much a goal per game pace. Right. Yeah. So, I, I yeah, I mean, I'm not concerned. I don't think there's an injury problem there. I think, you know, he's playing. Well. He, okay. You want to know why his numbers are down a little bit? Because he's not playing with Mitch Marner. That's why. And look, and why, and why is John Tavares' numbers up? Because he's playing with Mitch Marner. Mitch Marner right. is one of the two or three best playmaking wingers in the league. Right. So, but, but, but it's all about the team right now. And I'd rather, yeah. um, it, it, you know, so, okay. Um, like what's what's Matthew's idea here? Oh, I got to score sixty every year so I can be in a position that Ovi's in right now and potentially, you know, break these all these records. No, it's at this point. How about uh, evolving the game a little bit uh, on behalf of the team's sake, so that you know we can put ourselves in a better position as a team to succeed. The guy, like it's like I said, if you if you took the sh if you just took the governor off the shackles and just said go for it. You don't think the, the Matthews is going to score sixty again? Again, he's not playing with with the you know the 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 ultimate playmaker or the guy who's helped facilitate so many of these damn goals over the last year. But that's by design because again, putting the team first is the emphasis right now, and I'm on board with it. Uh, Mike, a few more minutes and let's get out of here. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at the I look at this team right now, and there's going to you know obviously there's going to be a little bit of a downshift from what they the success that they've had. Uh, over the last month or so, um, it, you you can't. It's it's unreasonable to expect them to maintain that level of success. But um, right now, they have to think first round, mm -hmm. Tampa or Boston, yeah. and is this team good enough to beat those teams? And right. I I say they might be, but you can't rest on your laurels, and you have to say, okay, well. We need to improve, and whether it's just an overall improvement or a specific area of improvement, then they they need to improve. Now, some people in the chat, and I agree with this. If 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 Kali Yarncroak is a, is an, is good enough to be second line left winger, and they think their defense is good enough, and they're happy with their goaltending, then where you think that they might improve would be probably up the middle. Um, you can't have enough depth up the middle if a guy like Ryan O'Reilly or a guy like Bo Horvat, now you're talking guys who are going to talk cost first round pick and prospect. Yeah. Nobody who's effective is going to be cheap. That's the thing you want to, you want, okay. You traded a first and fourth round pick to get Nick Foligno. Yeah, exactly. Well, they, gonna, they thought Mike that, that they thought they could take a run. I mean, they fucking blew everybody yeah. out and then they got, uh, sideswiped by by the Habs. So I, the, you know, looking back in hindsight, it was a dumb move. But at the time, who who didn't think that this would might have been the Leafs' best path be, because of everything that was going on to win it uh, at an abbreviated championship? Uh, we all kind of we look go back and watch the combo and uh, in in those days, we were all on board. We were all excited about it. And then what he happened? got hurt. In his, one, yeah, he got hurt in his third game, and he was never the same. And that, yeah. that's just the, that's just bad luck. Now, Michael in the chat saying giveaways, giveaways, giveaways. That's the one thing about the last two games uh, that I think was uh, something that is a little scary is that all of a sudden they got sloppy. They, they started giving, giving away the puck. I mean, they're, you know, it's one thing when you're battling and you're playing a five man defensive team, a defensive scheme to cover up for the fact that your defense is short enough, a shorthand. Yeah when you start giving away the puck and Marner did it and Neander did it and everybody did, it wasn't, it wasn't just one or two guys. I think they had 29 giveaways against the Rangers. You can't win when you're giving away the puck that much. And the one thing that they did over the last month or so is that they played response. Other than that game where Matt Murray stole it against Dallas, they played responsible defensively for most of those games. 
And, and, and the last two games, they really didn't. So they've got to get back to that. And I'm sure Sheldon Keefe, you know, Sheldon Keefe said, well, I thought we played a good defensive game. Of course, he's going to say that um, because he is not going to, he's not going to rake his team over the coals, but I'm telling you right now, they did not play as well defensively as they had in the past. And they need to, they'll need to get back to that if they want to win against Tampa on Tuesday. Uh, the, the back-to-back shutouts against Dallas and Los Angeles, the, the Leafs caught a couple of teams that were, weren't were playing great hockey in that moment, in those moments. And, and again, not to take a, anything away from what the Leafs were able to accomplish, the goaltending was great and they filled the net. It was what we wanted from them, right? But it's not like the Leafs were perfect either. The Leafs do give away a lot of uh, pucks. They they typically outshoot their competition and typically get out hit. I mean, that's... It's, when you just look look back at the running themes of game to game to game, these are things that um, are typically occur. It's not like there's this all of a sudden just a blip and it's like, whoa, what kind of game was that? We know what the Leafs are about. Now, the good thing is um, overall they're letting giving up fewer goals. If that trend continues, if, if again, uh, consistently and authentically, I mean, that that bodes, Mike, that, that can be the, the core... Um, the core tenant of uh, you know a team that is preparing itself to to head into the playoffs and have success in a different kind of way compared to the past. I mean, they had to have learned from that seven game series uh, against Tampa and obviously the uh, the failure against the Habs prior to and then going back to Boston. So if that if 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 we all of a sudden see this mass uh, this spike in goals against and it 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 gets worse and worse and the play generally gets sloppier, then we've really got some concerns on our hand. But I think if the defense is settled like we think it can be, the goaltending stays consistent, the guys stay healthy, you go get some sandpaper, especially up the middle, some guys who can play the game responsibly, but you know, hold down the fort for their crew and keep the goals against down, I think they're going to be heading into the playoffs on the right track. But man, it's, it's only December 18th, 2022. We got a, a long road to go. Michael Ajello from Chickamauga, New York. Before you go, dig yourself out. Dig in with a last word for us, okay? Okay. Um, well, I don't know if, should we should we venture should we venture outside the leaves and talk about the fact that the NHL last week at the Board of Governors meeting shit canned the good ideas that people want for the league meaning expanded playoffs meaning the cap going up but they are they are considering uh increasing the schedule to 84 games and overloading uh with divisional games which people really don't want anymore they they they, they you know like you really want to play buffalo eight times or, or your division team six times i think you know right now you know gary bettman uh is sort of holding the league hostage in terms of like the Arizona situation in terms of the, yeah, the 84 game schedule to me is asinine. Is there um, a, supposed to be a tournament for the number one pick? No, that's that, that that's been an idea out there that they, they want to avoid teams tanking. And of course that's going to gain momentum because oh, of Connor God, Bernard. God, God, it's, God. It's, yeah, no, please. Okay. Oh, it's, nobody watched. Remember, there was a game at the end of the year last year that uh, that uh, was before the playoffs started that they had to play. Nobody watched it because it was meaningless. Nobody's going to watch a tournament for the first overall pick. So please. Yeah, and again, the, 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 like it's almost like hockey's still trying to endear itself to people. Oh, you know, we're we're for real. You know, we've been around for a fucking century, but we we we're still not comfortable with. With who we are again expanded playoffs would be great for, for sure a salary cap um increase would be great but you know um th- these guys i guess they they believe they know better than we so we shall see how it all pans out in the moment uh the maple leafs have lost two in a row but that's okay they had picked up points in 15 straight games um, Mitch Marner, uh, the, the the new record holder for for points by a, a Leaf player. Uh, Nylander's on fire. The goaltending's pretty good. The, the defense is, has, has settled down. We're waiting for the one of the best defensemen in the, uh, the league to return to that unit as well. So things could be a lot worse, Michael Ajello. I think we can sneak another show in before Christmas, can't we? Yeah. Or where are we? 
Uh, Christmas is Sunday, so we could do one Friday okay. or Saturday. Yeah, well, I, I, OG's Converse, let us know what you think um, in community in the comments below this post. Do you need another show before Christmas, or do you want to catch up with us uh, after December 25th, and uh, we'll, we'll get moving towards the new year? Uh, like what you see, subscribe to the channel, let your friends know about us. We are on the ascent, just like the Maple Leafs, and it feels really good. No hat, Danny. I took a shower and got ready for the show for once. For Mike, I'm Norm. Talk to you next week.